in our letters and sort them out by date instead of by how often they've been read. Uh, let us give one second a, a warm welcome to all these uh, uh, traditional singers of India. As I already mentioned, they are the cultural pillars, even their cultural ambassadors of our country. Pablo Neruda was right in telling his poetic help Mario that a poem gets completed when people commit it to their memory. It has been happening so in our country since ages. The humble balladeers, such as the ones on stage from Rajasthan, have narrated their epic poems to people. In doing so, they enrich the content with their occasional comments too. The evening winded up with an enchanting performance of Kabir singing by Meghwal singers, Mirs by Kamart singers, Sufi by Magniars and Langhas. I think it's a very, uh, very good initiative and uh, very sincere and uh, very well organized. Uh, it's, a, it's a chance for people to interact with uh, uh, the Indian uh, poetry, the culture of India, the many different voices you have here and the outside world doesn't know much about. So from one side, uh, we are coming to India, but in the same time, in the same time, we are taking Indian culture back with us. It is really a very well-organized festival. I participate in many festivals in the world, and it is one of really one of the most uh, organized uh, with Medellin and Poirier. Very organized. Everybody is is helping you. Everybody is welcome you. Everything is generous. It's, it, it's really it's India with all the color of generosity and nice food and nice people and nice weather and nice trees. I think it's fantastic that uh, poets um, have come from all over the world and, um, um, and can mingle with uh, poets of India. I think, I think the important thing is you know, the dialogue that is created between poetry and friendships that are created between poetry. But the arrangements have been fantastic, uh, and all the sessions I've heard so far were wonderful. It was it's really nice to hear uh, poetry in different tongues, so the musicality of different languages is wonderful. The seventh session began on Sunday morning with Jean Arasana Yagam from Sri Lanka in the chair and had readings by Richard Gwynn yes. from the UK, Ranjit Hoskote from India, and Rajendra Mishra, also oh. from India. Reading bugs which, under the microscope, become grotesque and terrifying monsters. Dust that accumulates unnoticed and invisible until such time as it is noticed. And then you hear yourself observe that you had never realized quite how dusty this house was. I'm going to read from two books. Uh, Vanishing Acts, which is the new and selected poems. Who can paint grass, the cannibal shade of hair? Who can paint water as if it were a leper scarred black? Who can sit back and with chill eyes condemn a table of drunks, chalking up the blessed and the damned? Who, slouching in doorways, can pluck every man's fate, just players? louts. He can, whose gamester hand treats life as a shackle of terse hair around a wound. This is a different age and time with symbols scattered everywhere and reminders of the cruel, poverty-ridden times. An old, white-haired, shaggy-headed man bent with age stands on a street in Athens, shabby and down at heel, holding out a battered cooking vessel 
for dropped points. The eighth session pre-lunch was again a panel discussion on poetry titled Time and Timelessness. Balachandra Nimade was in the chair and had Jean Arasana Yagam, K. Shivareddy and Shafi Shok as the discussants with audience interaction as a welcome addition. I'll give some examples. Um, Samadhi. Uh, where Patanjali says, future and past fuse in the Samadhi. So time doesn't remain and everyone experiences this. That there is one um, protagonist, Gurujada's uh, drama, Kirisham, uh, and who is identified now to the all the politicians who have around us. And uh, I think how he could visualize the future politicians in the character of uh, uh, what we say, um, characters, Girisam. When we protest against recent social injustice, etc., in a very direct way, sometimes it's necessary as well, will they endure the test of time or become irrelevant? It depends on how you look at a, the title, how you interpret it. I think uh, I am unlike my friend, Shefi Shao. I am not defeated, I am not pessimistic. When I said a piece of creative work, I covered all the forms, you know. It has a place, it has a time. My question is, if it is rooted in the place and if it captures the experience of the people in that locality, it is time bound. If it is authentic, as he said, if it is handed over, properly by a gifted poet, it becomes uh, applicable to the coming generation. I've been here. The ninth Some session had Tulsi Devasa back. from Nepal in As the chair with readings the, by Manda Krantasen, H.S. Shiva Prakash and yes. Najwan Darvish. During that period, I've come in contact with a lot of very distinguished representative Indian intellectuals, creative writers, Many professors. No nante panta shesh, ran nate phodon de bushad, kan nate lobon ache, jolo ache, kukitui rand, chotrish banjon, tate chotrish rakom dukhobish, talk shop no, mishti hingshe, kom jenana hai, dekhish. Kanasu kanditi ga kanumundina nota. Kanasu Kanditi ga kannu hundi da nota Bidda mane gedda likkidda kambagalu Navane hulagada madhya Paalu nela Allidda mane ya uida kone ya chinna gul Raayitu hum yadaun khalati fi akiyas plastik sauda Wa fi zawaya al akiyas ta tajamma'u Bima uhunna al harra Lakin anna laysa li khalat Araftu anna hum qad qatalu natasha Ibnati lati fi thalitha Lakin it was Sahit Academy who sent me for instance to Frankfurt. Uh, similarly, poets have got the opportunity to be part of international events under the auspices of the Sahit Academy program. But this particular event organized here in New Delhi is definitely uh, of a, a great historical nature and it is making history. Hearing poetry from so many different traditions in India, I think this is something which many of us from other continents don't realize, that India really is a subcontinent and that there are many, many traditions within it, tremendously rich traditions. It's a pleasure to encounter those as well as poetry from all over the world. Um, it, it is a, a great pleasure today to share it and, and a great privilege indeed. And I wish the festival the very, very best for this year and for many years to come. The theme of oneness um, is so important, the way in which poetry unites what has been broken by so many other forces in the world. This is a great part of its work. and. Uh, it has, it has done so over the centuries, it will continue to do so, and um, I think the, the spirit behind this, uh, this festival is very much, as far as I can see, the spirit of Tagore, 
and uh, the great spirit of pacifism as well, which India has given to the world. It's very interesting to meet poets from all over the world. You have, today I've been listening to poets from Palestine, from uh, Philippines, from, uh, and also many from India and from Denmark. And it's wonderful to be surrounded by poetry from so many la countries and in so many languages. So it's just, uh, as, a, as a poet, it's uh, just the best thing you can be a part of a festival like this. This is one of the most beautiful poetry, world poetry festival that I have attended so far. My experience being here and exchanging ideas and views and hearing, reciting poems by different poets of different parts of the world is not only enriching, not only just exchanging and sharing the poetic writing of experiences, but also to enlighten ourselves with the direct contact of the poet. That's one of the best things what I have seen so far. You are exposed to many poets all over the world and it has been very nice to be with poets inside the hall and outside the hall. Um, as you know, poetry is the uh, crown of literary expression. So um, it is really a wonder to have heard so many poets and be with poetry all these days. I hope this kind of uh, week is held um, every now and then at Bharat Bhavan. The last day of the festival began with a pleasing Mridangam recital by P. Jayabhaskar. The session was chaired by K. Shivaredi and had readings by Antonio Colinas, Gerard Noret, and Mangalesh Tabral. Poetry and the rare combination of classical and folkloric elements in his diction. Escuchadme, Señor. De Madrid a Moscú he viajado en vano. Giacomo Casanova accepts the position of librarian offered to him by Congo Listen to me, Lord. My limbs are sad. With the French Revolution, my friends are dying. Look at me. I have toured the countries of the world, the prisons of the world, the beds, the gardens, the seas, the convents, and I have seen my goodwill turned down. I was an abbot, within the walls of Rome, and it was beautiful being a soldier in the torrid nights in Corfu. Il commente les nouvelles de la vallée qui sont histoire d'argent et de filles, de moutons et de maquis. Bons ou cruels, les événements tentent comme des glaçons, tandis que les plus jeunes, le long du muret aux vélités de remparts, cause de seins, de chattes, de cul. Les amants. The lovers. Chaque matin, le Each morning, the 7.01 a.m. nude crosses the corridor. He, he from the kitchen, turned his eyes in order to le catch this splash of light. The marble accomplished, carlage, the footprints evaporating from the tiles, he drinks his coffee and has no difficulty in imagining Sisyphus happy. Okay, the first poem is Bachi Vi Jagahe. रोज कुछ भूलता कुछ खोता रहता हूं चश्मा कहां रख दिया है कलम कहां खो गया है अभी अभी नीला रंग देखा था वह पता नहीं कहां चला गया 
चिट्ठियों के